it's not the moth, it's the larvae. Absolutely, the larva, that's the feeding stage of these uh, moths. We've actually got one on. Um, uh, the reason I'm doing this very early on is because he looks like he's making a run for it. Yeah. So, uh... so what you can see here is that you've got the larva on there and this is the kind of damage that they can do. We did have a hole over here. On the, on the there side. We go. So Look, the, the larva the, uh... there, the caterpillar, caterpillar of these moths feed on that, that's the damage they do. Um, woolens mostly, this is a fine pair of cashmere trousers, but that's what they do. Equally over here, a pair of woolen trousers, and you can see the, the kind of damage they do, particularly when they're stored in the bottom of the wardrobe. So you've got piles of these, the adult moths come in, lay their eggs. Quite difficult to, to quite difficult. They've yeah. put a pole on the end of this. <laughs> I've never had a pole on the end of this before, it's really difficult. Um, so, uh, so is it worse? This year than before we've been. Arguably, the, yeah, this is the time of year when we notice them coming out. Uh, we're getting our woolens and things out anyway, so um, we're disturbing things, maybe noticing them. This is a good time of year to check them. What we've got to remember is that we've got 2,500 species of moth in the UK. It's only about four or five, really, which are feeding on our clothes. So we've got some very specific ones. We've got the, the common clothes moth, um, which we've got an example of the larva. That's that the larva him. we were looking He's at. He's just crawled underneath He's the He's gone the there. He's gone yeah. to hide himself away. We've got the case-bearing clothes moth, which is rather a smart little character, because it builds a case made of the fibres that it's eating, so it has a little disguise. Oh, so it's camouflage In that respect, that. camouflage is a coat of many colours. Oh, really? Um, so that that's the one there? that feeling. Yes, that's that's the case that they build on. So they, mm. they can be very difficult to notice and they can be very destructive. But the moths are very very tiny. We're talking about moths which are about six to eight millimeters long only. So the big flappy moths that we see around, not a problem. These are moths which are doing other things in the environment and absolutely harmless. Tiny moths we've got to look out for, and um, little straw coloured things like this. This is what we've got to look out for. So so w w how how do they get in? How do they get in? Well, they do live with us. They've been living with us since we lived in caves essentially. So they're in that home anyway at a background level but they can build up in numbers particularly when they find some fabulous resources so if we moved over to the cupboard here we've got you know kind of fairly standard wardrobe um, with the woolens hanging in but we often pile woolens you know a cashmere and things that are on the bottoms of wardrobes this is all marvelous food for them so the adult moth finds those lays the eggs and if it's undisturbed so what we can do is really plenty of disturbance so check through your wardrobe fairly regularly uh, particularly at sort of this time of year look out for any little tiny moths, vacuum the bottoms of cupboards and, and wardrobes very well. There's all sorts of other things we can arm ourselves with. You can keep things sealed in wardrobes. So we've got a vacuum pack um, there. You vacuum the air out of it, storing your woolens in there, and that seals them so the moth, the adult moths can't get in to lay eggs. Um, smelly things as well. They're not moth killers, but what you get with smelly things. So we've got um, some sort of lavender, lavender bags, things like that. And so the cedar stuff as well. Does and we've got work? cedar. I've got that all over yep, my wardrobe. That's the thing to use, sort of okay, cedar, okay. cedar um, hangers. The, the, the smell of that is it's somewhat a deterrent, um, but also it sort of masks the smells of the clothes. But it doesn't kill them. That just it doesn't kill them, them, but away. it sort of will keep them away. It's better than the old-fashioned mothballs because they were terribly stinky things. We don't want to walk around the streets smelling of mothballs. Did um, they work? Um, again, they worked early in that way, but I think they were kind of worse for us, really. You know, mm. they, they're a terrible sort of smell and, and stink. But now we can go around smelling of lavender and cedarwood, much better for the, the, the environment. Um, one of my preferred methods are pheromone traps. Um, this is sort of science if you like. This is quite clever. So what we've got is a sticky pad there with the female sex pheromone of the particular moths that we're trying to trap. This attracts the males. They get gummed onto the, the, the package there, the sticky stuff, and that takes them out of the, the, the environment, mm. hopefully before they've bred with the females. The males tend to fly more readily than the females, looking in pursuit of females. Oh, um, so that so takes them out and gets them stuck. Just look for the girls. So, just next thing you know, you're stuck up a uh, thing oh, in the wardrobe. That's a, that's a super thing. So that's a kind of sort of ward wardrobe management, I guess. Plenty of disturbance, checking through it fairly regularly. That's what we would be looking for. What if you ha open your wardrobe like this today and discover that they are already? Absolutely. How do you if you deal discover it, we move on to our next station, really. is um, One of the best methods is I guess you've got to assess whether or not those clothes that you've got are beyond you know, uh, salvage really. So if you've got lots of holes in your pants, um, things might start falling out. You don't want to do with that. But if you, you think it's OK, you can freeze them. Brilliant method here, freezing them. Pop it in a plastic bag in a domestic freezer, three to five days, kills the adults uh, and any, on there, any eggs and larvae on there as well. Um, um, uh, what do we call it? Uh, dry, uh, washing, yes, uh, dry cleaning. Dry cleaning is yeah. to, that kills all that, the eggs as well and right. the larvae, so that gets rid of that. So I guess the important thing is, once you've found them, you can treat them like that. You can store them in boxes once you've treated them. That keeps the adult moths out. Um, uh, 
plenty of, of disturbance, as I say. Doesn't fly spray kill them? Uh, that will do. A lot of people don't really like using insecticides in homes, and I mm. must admit, if you don't, you know, there are other ways you can manage it. So certainly the dry cleaning, certainly the freezing, certainly boxing things up and keeping things sealed, disturbing them. You can most people can manage this on their own, you know. But if you find that you can't, then certainly turn to your local pest controller, and they can advise and give you plenty of uh, you know help with with getting rid of the moth problem. They can build up in vast numbers if they're unchecked.